haven't really practiced taking off and I have a lot of people give me a lot of crap about it. So let's try it. Let's try to take off. Hey, buenos dias, que paso amigos? Bienvenidos, welcome back to John's Moto Garage. Today we're talking the Harley Davidson new Lowrider S, not the Dyna, but the Softail. What's all the hype about this new motorcycle? What the heck is going on? The internet and the moto community practically blew up yesterday. I couldn't believe how many videos were coming up on the Lowrider S. And I'm talking from all sources, from all over the place. So naturally you had people hitting me up, dude, the new Lowrider S is out. Have you seen it? What are your thoughts? What do you think about it? Truth be told, I wasn't totally planning on doing a video about it, but I figured out hey, what the heck. I will say shout out to Kerboski, one of the viewers. He sent me a leaked photo of the Lowrider S a little while back and the rumors had been floating around. So I knew something was coming up. So anyway, I'm gonna jump on the bandwagon. We're gonna talk, first of all, what's all the hype about? Why is everybody so stoked on the Lowrider S? Secondly, what are my thoughts and opinions on it? And then thirdly, I'm gonna discuss why I personally will not be buying the new 2020 Softail Lowrider S. And of course, if you guys dig the content, be sure to like and subscribe. You can support me on Instagram at John's Moto Garage, and you can also support me now on Patreon. Huge shout out to the patrons. Your support is much appreciated. Link below if you're interested in that. What better bike to take for a spin and discuss this topic on than Bam, bam, the Honda Grom over here. Perfect, let's hit it. All right, you guys, let's talk the Lowrider S. So what is all the hype about this motorcycle? What is it that people think is so cool about it? And why is it that I will not be buying the Lowrider S? All right, just screwing around, you guys. Obviously, we're gonna take the Lowrider S out. Hey, big thumbs up if I, if I got you guys on that one. All right, enough screwing around. Whoa. All right, so for starters, a bit of a disclaimer. I'm not gonna be going over like all the detailed specs on this motorcycle. Videos on that are a dime a dozen already. And of course, you can do a quick Google search and find out everything you need on that. But we will cover the basics here. So the new Softail Lowrider S is gonna be a 114 cubic inch. The Milwaukee 8, six speed I would imagine. It's got the mid controls. It's got the little cowl that comes with it. Your narrow drag bars. The first thing that drew my attention when I saw it was the inverted front forks. So right off the bat, I think they're making strides in the right direction because if you're into the performance Dyna or performance Harley stuff rather, the inverted front forks, man, that's like holy grail. That's like the cream de la crop or crop de la cream. I don't know, the cream of the crop. You know what I'm trying to say. So you got the inverted front forks. They brought back the dual front disc brakes. And personally, I think they did a good job keeping to the, keeping it true to the original styling. One other thing that I haven't heard anybody else mention that I think was pretty cool is on the new one, they actually have the full rear fender instead of the chopped bob rear fender. So whoever did that on the design, great job. Kudos, man, hats off to you. So I'd have to say from a styling standpoint, I think they hit the nail on the head. It's obviously a different motorcycle. It's a soft tail, not the Dyna. It is definitely reminiscent of the Lowrider S styling. Now, big question, why all the hype? Why is everybody all crazy about this? Well, the Lowrider S, when it was released as a Dyna line in one, uh, from 2016 to 2017, it was like the ultimate Dyna to have. 110 cubic inch, just complete monster. The new one has more horsepower, more torque, if I'm not mistaken. And it's like a total hot rod muscle bike motorcycle but an an interesting point that fx dls brooklyn brought up that i hadn't really thought of is in 2016 when they released the lowrider s who had a 110 there were no other dynas that offered the 110 and so it was kind of like the cvo option on the dyna line now it has a 114 which is a bigger engine 
but you got a handful of other options if you want a 114 as well. And so it's not as unique or special in that regard. Again, shout out FX DLS Brooklyn. You mentioned that and I thought that was a great point. So had they gone with say the 117, then I think it would have been a little more true to the original Lowrider S. Not that you can't do those upgrades, obviously people do, but just a thought. Now I have to say, the Harley Davidson release video that they did on it, in my opinion, was rather bland. They say laughter is the best medicine. They must never have tasted wind. They didn't have a single wheelie. They didn't have a single dude rocking 12 o'clock or scraping. And so I gotta say, Harley, dude, for such a rad motorcycle that you're releasing, you would think you could come up with a little bit higher quality uh, video there. And the dude wasn't even wearing Vans. He didn't have Dickies on and he wasn't wearing plaid. So I don't know what they were thinking with the model that they selected. So all I can say is if this new Lowrider S is anything like the old one, then everybody's in for a treat and I say the hype is well worth it. Now for the real big question, the big reveal that everybody could care less about honestly, why am I not going to be buying the new Lowrider S? And it's a simple answer, the sunk cost fallacy. That's right you guys, we're going back to economics 101. The sunk cost fallacy, look it up on Wikipedia. If you don't know what it is, but it's pretty basic. I've already dumped way too much money into this. I dumped my heart and soul into this. I spent so much time looking for this motorcycle. I can't back out now, dude. I can't just leave this bike behind and get something different. I would be like I wasted all that money and all that time for nothing. Living true to the sunk cost fallacy right there. All right, obviously, JK, that's not the uh, reason I won't be buying one. The real reason that I do not plan on buying the Lowrider S is for the same reason I don't buy any brand new motorcycles. For one, it's expensive off the lot. For two, I'm going to wait until they've worked out the kinks. But for three, really, the main reason is I'm just going to wait a couple years until I can pick one up that has already been set up the way I would more or less do it myself. Thereby saving myself all that upfront cost with doing all the aftermarket upgrades and everything. In conclusion, I'm actually super stoked that they re uh, brought it back. I'm excited to see what people do with it. And I can already imagine the super rad builds that we're gonna see out there. Now, one thing that people may be wondering is how is this going to impact the Dyna Lowrider S sales and values and all that. If you weren't already into the Lowrider S stuff, you may not know, but dealerships were asking an arm and a leg for the used lowrider s's or new ones off the lot and it was out it was outrageous i'm talking like over msrp after they discontinued the dyna line so this is obviously pure speculation i think that we will see a bit of a dip in the prices maybe bring the lowrider s dyna version prices back to where they probably should have been this entire time so yeah, I think it will impact prices on the used market for sure. To a certain extent, you'll still have some people that are diehard Dyna fans and refuse to move to the soft tail. But I think most of us will be able to see the appeal. To the uh, innovation and new build. And so I do think demand is gonna go down slightly for the Dyna Lowrider S as supply goes up with the overall Lowrider S on the soft tail platform. And a lot of people are gonna be looking for the latest and greatest. I think it may have a potential negative impact as well on things like the Fat Bob sales. Just the Fat Bob sales in general as well as possibly the Sport Glide sales. One of the biggest appeals in my opinion to the Fat Bob was the inverter front forks. I think that has the dual disc in the front as well but a lot of people end up spending extra money to get rid of that fatty front tire, and they do a ton of mods to get it looking more like the soft tail. So now you have a Lowrider S that comes standard with inverted forks, standard with dual front disc brakes, and it's got the larger tank. So, so it kind of takes the best of all worlds, combines it into one, a little bit of a premium price tag. But people are already paying that premium by doing the off aftermarket mods anyway. So. 
don't know, this is pure speculation again, but I I could almost imagine the fat bob going away at some point, but who knows? Again, that's just a thought that crossed my mind. And then the same with the Sport Glide. I thought the Sport Glide was super rad. I love the handling on that thing when I rode it. And I love the inverted front forks, but now with that option of the Lowrider S and the fact that it comes with the bigger engine, it almost makes me wonder what's the point of the Sport Glide. Who would opt for the Sport Glide over the Lowrider S? Aside from that, you get the, the saddlebags on it. I honestly have no idea really what I'm talking about. All right, there you have you guys, the Dyna Lowrider S. That's my thoughts on the new Softail. Pretty rad looking motorcycle. Leave a comment below, what do you guys think? Do you dig it? Do you not even care? I know some of you guys out there are not even Harley fans anyway, so it's like, what's all the hype about? You're still spending an arm and a leg on a motorcycle that pales in comparison to the performance aspect of much cheaper alternatives out there. Different strokes for different folks, my friends. All right, you guys, if you dig the content, like, subscribe, hit me on Instagram, at John's Moto Garage. If you're looking for additional ways to support the channel, you can also do so through Patreon. Huge shout out to the patrons so far. Thanks a bunch. All right, you guys, we'll hit you on the next one. Adios, nos vemos. This is the old stomping grounds, the skate park. I spent many an hour here back in high school skating. Should have brought my, uh, should have brought my board. Hey, if any of you guys are football fans, this here happens to be the Arizona Cardinals training center. 